Hello, hello. Uh, my name is Valentin Droll. I'm a professor for geology and in particular petrology, the science of rocks and geochemistry. And I work mainly on volcanoes, active volcanoes throughout the world. I work in Iceland, in the Canary Islands and in Indonesia, uh, besides several other places. And Indonesia is one of the areas where I've been working for a long time, for something like 20 years. And I've been uh, focusing on uh, Javanese volcanoes and I've been traveled from east to west and from west to east all through Javan um, volcano landscapes. And um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the uh, initiative to make Ijen, Kave Ijen in Eastern Java, a UNESCO, a global UNESCO geopark. And uh, Ijen is a is a fantastic place, geologically speaking. It's got one of the largest acidic crater lakes in the world. And uh, on top of that, it's got these active fumarol fields. And uh, there we have liquid sulfur being emitted and it hardens to make these amazing yellow sulfur deposits. And uh, let me share a few impressions with you from one of my uh, visits. This is going back a little bit to before Corona. And here we have sulfur encrusted rocks from the uh, vapors that are emitted by the volcano and the eerie blue crater lake behind it. And it's acidic. It's got a pH of about one. You don't want to go in there with your bare feet. And um, this is a very unique situation. And just on the other side of the lake, there's an outlet. When the lake overflows, it actually um, feeds a little river that's going down into the main caldera. And uh, the Kavai Jen volcano sits on the fringe of that caldera. Inside the caldera, we have amazing uh, plantations of coffee, one of the finest coffees in all of Java. And most people uh, uh, have probably heard, but uh, coffee grows particularly well on volcanic soil. And uh, this makes for a really good coffee over there. But um, also the volcanic nature, the active volcanic nature in that area um, is uh, now being explored for geothermal energy. So hopefully the people there will be able to harvest the volcanic power um, and make it into energy via a geothermal plant inside the caldera. So um, here we have some of these liquid sulfurous mini lava flows, and uh, that means the temperature is several hundred degrees hot, otherwise sulfur would not be liquid. And it's a unique thing. I've seen it in a few other places, but only with a few droplets of liquid sulfur. But to have it on this scale is quite unparalleled. It's magnificent. And here we have this little uh, sulfurous lava flow. When the sulfur is, um, when it's um, liquid, it's actually orangey in color. And when it hardens, when it cools, it goes yellow. And you can watch this there. Within minutes, it can go from orange to yellow. So you can really see it flowing and hardening. And um, we're doing a little bit of research there. We are interested in why the volcano is so active in terms of fumarole degassing. And um, we're therefore collecting gas there, but also we collected some of the sulfurous, the native sulfur material, and we analyzed it for isotopes. Here you see us with gas masks in the fumarole field, and uh, we are collecting gas into a little container that we then analyze in the laboratory. And uh, we have done so, and uh, here's some first results. They are as yet unpublished, but they're quite spectacular. For those of you not familiar with it, let me run you through this very briefly. This is sulfur isotopes, and there's a reference value. The mantle of the Earth has values approximately in that green bar. And we also looked at sulfur from other Javanese volcanoes like Papandayan in uh, West Java, central to West Java. And that falls into the mantle range here, but Kava Ijen, native sulfur, plots to the left. And there's very, very few samples that plot to the left. For all the Sunda arc lavas ever analyzed, only one sample plots to the left. Something is going on there, something very, very special. And uh, we believe that uh, this has something to do with how the volcano is structured under Ijen. And here again, we have carbon isotopes and sulfur isotopes. For those unfamiliar with isotopes, this is a bit like a map, like a compositional map. The mantle of the earth is about here in this uh, green field. And the Sunda are glavas plot about here, but Kava Ijen plots off. And uh, we have likely 
uh, sedimentary influence. There's a lot of marine sediments sitting under Ijen and uh, they are partly being recycled. So I think we have this unique and very special case of gases from the volcano migrating through the volcano, through the plumbing system, and they are releasing some of the uh, volatiles locked in the sedimentary rock, and that mix of volatiles then comes through at the surface, making this very special situation. So uh, in this case, I think uh, it's geologically a really important place, and it's also culturally really important. And uh, I think hopefully also in terms of geothermal power, it will be extremely important for supplying the local communities. I think it would make a wonderful UNESCO Global Geopark and the initiative has my fullest support. Thank you for your time. All the very best. Bye-bye.